Well, and thank you for joining us this evening again for um, devotional time. Tonight, I uh, would like to read from uh, Reflections for Ragamuffins from Brennan Manning uh, on the mystery of the Ascension. Uh, it is, I believe today is Ascension Day uh, in, the, in the greater uh, Christian tradition. If not, it's, it's very soon. Um, and so it uh, seemed like an appropriate time to, to lift that up. And he writes this. The mystery of the Lord's ascension contains an important lesson for the security-prone conscience. Jesus says to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. That's John 16, 7. Why is that? How could Jesus' departure profit the apostles? Well, primarily because if he failed to go, the paraclete will never come to you. Whereas if I go, I will send him to you. So what Jesus responded. And secondarily, because while he was still visible on earth, there was always the danger that the apostles would be so wedded to the sight of his human flesh that they would leave the certainty of faith and lean upon the tangible evidence of the senses. To see Jesus in the flesh was good, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. John 20, 29. And Brennan Manning closes with this scripture quote, again from the book of John 16, verse 7. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. You know, I have to admit, the, the ascension is one of those doctrines, realities, parts of, of Jesus' story that... Um, Growing up, it certainly was not emphasized very much in, in, in my tradition, American Baptist growing up, and maybe uh, more so in, in some congregations than others. But, uh, you know, the Ascension, even though it's there in the Apostles' Creed, uh, part of the big tradition of, of our Christian family, our tribes of, of so many denominations and kinds, it's right there. And it's right there in the scripture as a focal point in um, the, the sort of the, the Luke Acts um, combination of telling Jesus' story and the birth of the, of the church, of um, its inherent in the Gospel of John and in Jesus' talk of glorification. Uh, it's part of Jesus being raised up, not only raised up on the cross and not only raised up on Easter morning, but lifted up, glorified in the presence of witnesses uh, where where Jesus returns to the side of the Father. And there's a lot of great articles uh, that are written on this, sort of this Protestant um, realization. Yeah, we don't talk about that very much. What, what is that? Why is, why is that so important? And I'm certainly not going to be able to unpack it all here in just a, a few moments of a devotional. But there are maybe two things uh, that I was thinking about and, and as I was reading and reflecting on on what Jesus' ascension means for us today, and, and something you know to think about is, first of all, the ascension means, as Scripture tells us, that Jesus is seated at the right hand of of the Father of of God, and and that is a position of authority, and that uh, in Scripture we find this claim that the crucified and resurrected Christ is now beginning to reign. Uh, over the earth, exercising the lordship. We, we call Jesus Lord. Uh, we, we say that he is not only our savior, but he is king. He's Messiah. He's the one that God has anointed and chosen to exercise uh, the rule of, of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, over all things. And if that's true, which is a claim of scripture, if that's true, that means that right now, the kingdom of God is breaking into this world, that Jesus' reign is beginning to unfold. And, and so in the midst of all circumstances, we can again look for what is God doing in this time? How is Jesus exercising his reign? Not in the kind of sort of meticulous control, like that a puppet master pulling strings, but how is God at work bringing about all things to God's purpose. Um, I like the New Testament word uh, perfection, uh, telos uh, in Greek, which 
isn't just like a static sort of, okay, it's perfect, it's done, walk away. It is more a word that points to it's reached its fulfillment, what it's for, what it's all about. And God is, is bringing into being that what it's all aboutness into the world. Uh, and, and I think that we can take some comfort in that. The other thing is that the ascension reminds us that while Jesus was on the earth, he was limited in many ways, um, fully God, fully human. And part of that in the incarnation meant that Jesus was not everywhere at once. Uh, Jesus was localized in a, in a scandalous way, honestly. It's one that it's, it's part of uh, understanding uh, how a member of the Trinity, how God could empty God's self of all the glory and benefits of deity uh, to be restricted in that way. And, and, and Jesus was. And, and yet now, not being with us in person, Jesus is able to be more present with us, more present with all of creation uh, in, in a new way uh, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and in that, uh, God is also creating a space for us and our lives and our responses to God's grace and love to matter. Uh, if, if God wanted to do everything without us, God could probably do that. Uh, and yet it doesn't seem that that's how God's ordered the world. God creates space for us to, to live and act and respond and create space for our choices for better or for ill to make a difference, uh, to impact other people's lives, to impact this world, all of creation. Uh, and it has an impact on us as well. And so the ascended Lord, Jesus who sits at the right hand of God, uh, is, is one who also invites us not only to trust him, but to take up our part in bearing witness to the presence and the work of God through our lives and simply by noticing uh, and giving praise to God as God acts in the world. How might we do that this week? Maybe that's a thought for for. The, this evening for us to ponder and as we enter into the days, how can we look for what God is up to? And what difference does it make to us to say that Jesus is not just my Savior, but Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is the one who is reigning. And what does God's reign, what does God's kingdom look like whenever we are recognizing that in our lives, in our community, uh, and in our prayers? May God bless you and be with you wherever you're at on your journey. Uh, and I am so glad that you've joined us tonight. Take care.